Let's share the word for today. I'm sure you noticed that on Christmas Day, which was just two days ago, on Christmas Day, there was a beautiful double rainbow in the sky. How many of you saw it? Most of us didn't. We didn't some say, praise God. And, and most of us didn't get to see it personally, but we, we, we saw the photos, right? Uh, being posted all over the media, all over the social media. And thank God. And, and some, I, I saw some posting, they, they, they mentioned that, hey, this is a symbol of hope. And indeed, thank God, thank God that on Christmas Day, there was this beautiful double rainbow in the sky. Now, of course, you know from the Bible where it came from. It came from the story of Noah's Ark, what God did. Hallelujah. Let's look at Genesis chapter 9, in verse 12 to 16. In Genesis chapter 12, verse uh, chapter 9, verse 12 to 16, here it says, God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. Notice in verse 15 as well as in verse 16, twice, the Lord says, I will remember my covenant with you and with all the creatures on earth. Now, today we're not preaching about the rainbow, but it does remind us of last Sunday's message. Do you recall? In a moment, we will recap. But it also leads us into today's message which we'll find out what is it. But right now, what is the purpose of the rainbow? Rainbow is a sign, it's a reminder. It's a reminder. Now, remember this. The reminder is not so much for God, but for us. God is all-powerful and all-knowing. He has no memory problem, although we have. How many of you have some memory problem here and there? All right. God does not need reminder, but we do. We do. So although God said, hey, I set the rainbow in the sky as a reminder, but remember, it is really for us. So that when we see the rainbow in the sky, we are reminded. We are reminded of God's covenant with all creatures on earth. That He will no longer use the flood to bring judgment and, and destroy all living things on earth. And so, in other words, it is a symbol of mercy in the midst of judgment. It is also a sign of hope in the midst of despair. Whatever may have taken place in the midst of challenges, disappointment, even despair, thank God, there is hope. There is hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, the rainbow hang in the sky, is a reminder. It's a great reminder to us of God's mercy, of God's hope for us. The rainbow is also a reminder to us that our God is a God who remember. Hallelujah. Do you remember last Sunday's message? Fear not. God remembers you. That's right. So the rainbow reminds us that our God is a God who remember. And we share three things. One, God remembers His people. You and I. He doesn't forget us. Hallelujah. Sometimes you may feel as though God has forgotten you. You feel as though you are left in the shelf. Put aside, chuck aside in the corner. But God has actually been with you all the way. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we can't see Him. But the shepherd has been with us all the way. God 
remembers His people. Secondly, God remembers our prayer. Of course, you must pray. Hallelujah. And thank God when we pray, God remembers. Now, we want all prayer to be answered immediately. All of us want that. But there are some prayer that God does not answer immediately for a good purpose, for a good reason. In His time, He makes all things beautiful in His time. At the right time, then the answer to the prayer became even more beautiful. Just like cooking, there are some dishes that takes time to boil, takes time to bring forth its flavour. And so when God deals with us, when He answers our prayer, His timing will not go wrong. And so when the prayer is not answered immediately, sometimes we feel so discouraged. We may even forget about that prayer. But prayer of faith, these are not forgotten by God. God remembers our prayer. So take heart and pray. Hallelujah. Answer is on the way. And thirdly, God remembers His promises. Hallelujah. That's right. His promises are yes and amen. He say yes to all His promises. What do we do? We say amen in response. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word amen means yes. So God say yes. What do we do? We say yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. We say yes. Don't say no. Okay? So watch what you say. Don't say no, but say yes to God. Hallelujah. So yes and yes, yes and amen. And it shall be done. Praise God. So the rainbow reminds us that God remembers. But today we shall discover that the rainbow actually is also a reminder to us, to all of us, not to forget God. A reminder to us to make sure that we remember God. Even as God remembers us, do we remember Him? So the Bible tells us, don't ever forget the Lord your God. Let us make sure that we remember Him. That's right. And this is the title of our message today. Remember the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Remember the Lord your God. Hallelujah. And of course, we're not talking about memory lapses. All of us in our daily life, there will be times when we forget this, forget that. Don't you? Sometimes, you are you, you, going somewhere, you want to do something, buy something, then halfway, there's some, maybe some minor interruption, and you turn around, eh, what, what am I supposed to do? Right? Forget, you know? Oh, I've forgotten. And, and so, that happens to all of us, especially as we age. The older we get, chances are, you know, our memory fear us here and there. But when we talk about remembering God, when we talk about not forgetting God, we're not talking about mental memory issue. But rather, we're talking about a spiritual issue. Rather, we're talking about the focus of our heart. And so, when we say, remember the Lord your God, what we are saying is this, that we are to focus on Him that we are to trust in Him, that we are to believe in Him, that we are to walk with Him closely. Hallelujah. That's what we are talking about. To remember the Lord, our God, is to focus on Him. Amen? It's to trust in Him. It's to believe in Him, obey Him, walk with Him. And then, at the same time, when we talk about forgetting God, again, it's not about memory issue. Just as we to remember is to pay attention to Him. So to forget God is to ignore Him. To forget God is to disobey Him. Is to trust in self rather than God. Is to trust in idols rather than in the true and living God. To forget God is to lose focus in our life. Is to go our own ways instead of walking with Him closely. And therefore, forgetting God 
Remembering God, this has to do with issues of our heart, issues of our faith. In other words, to remember the Lord our God is to live the true Christian life. To forget God is to backslide from the faith. And so, as we say goodbye to 2020 and enter into 2021, let's make a decision today. Let's encourage one another not to forget God, but rather let us remember the Lord our God all the more as we enter into a brand new year. Remember the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And we find the Bible, many reminders from the Word of God. From cover to cover, full of passages reminding us to not forget God, to remember the Lord our God. For example, Moses, in his departing message to the Israelite, in the book of Deuteronomy, at least six times, he reminded them, it's also to remind us not to forget God. Now, the book of Deuteronomy is interesting because it is like a, the departing sermons of Moses. After 40 years in the wilderness, when the new generation was at the bank of Jordan, ready to cross over, enter into the promised land, like ready to cross over into the new year, Moses taught them, preached to them, reminded them what has taken place in the past to warn them, to learn from the lesson, and also to challenge them, to trust God, follow Him all the way, so that they can go in and possess the promised land. And in chapter 8 of Deuteronomy, three times He reminded them not to forget God. So it's a message for us as well. Let's look at these verses in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. Here it says, Take care, lest you forget. Notice, take care, lest you forget. In other words, don't forget. Lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping His, covenant, His commandments and His rules and His statutes which I command you today. And if you refer to the verse verses just before verse 11, it's talking about when you enter the promised land, when you enjoy the goodness, the abundance and the blessing, make sure you don't forget God. That's where verse 11 comes in. Take care lest you forget the Lord your God. And then let's look at verse 14. In verse 14, Then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. And here is another reminder, another warning. Make sure that your heart don't be lifted up. In other words, don't become proud. And once you are proud, you forget that it is God who brought you into the promised land. If your heart becomes proud, you forget God and then you thought that it is your own power, your own ability. So, here is a warning. And then in verse 19, Verse 19, And if you forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. And so here is a solemn warning. Not just a reminder. Because here it says that if you forget God, what will happen? You will go your own way. You will fall into sin you will enter into judgment. You will enter into the curses and the consequences of sin. And you will perish. And so, with such reminder, all over the Bible, in the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, we are told not to forget the Lord our God. But why so many reminders? Why all this repeated warning? Why? Simply because we are so prone to forget, isn't it? We are so prone to wonder in our heart. We are so prone to forget. We need reminder. We need reminder that we are not to forget God. And so we can sum up this principle in this one statement. And the statement is this. Don't forget God 
and perish. Let us remember God and prosper. Hallelujah. That's right. Can we say it together? One, two, three. Don't forget God and perish. Let's remember Him and prosper. That's right. Don't forget God. If not, we will perish. But remember Him and we will walk in His prosperous plan. Let's look at this principle from a few angles. First of all, let's discover when are, the, when are we most tempted to forget God? What are the times? What situation? When are we most tempted to forget God? Of course, all of us face different temptation and we may have different, different scenario. But here are three of the most common scenario when we are most tempted to forget God. Number one, in times of success and prosperity. Is it true? In times of success and prosperity. Sadly, it is very true that in times of trouble, most Christians will at least hold on to God and say, oh God, help me. But in times of success, prosperity, when things are going well, what happened? We tend to forget God. Oh, we get so caught up in the wonderful life and then we just go our own way and then we put God aside. We ignore Him until the next trouble comes around. And this is the story of the book of Judges. That's what happened to them. When things went well, they forget about God. And then when they were oppressed by the enemy, then they cry out to God and God delivered them. Oh, they say, thank God, thank God. Then after that, they put God aside, went their own way and then fell into sin Oh, it was a sad, vicious cycle. And unfortunately, this is just not some story of the past. This is our story as well. That in times of success, prosperity, that's when we are most prone, most tempted to forget God. That's why there's this interesting prayer in the book of Proverbs. In chapter 13, verses 7 to 9. Let's look at it. In Proverbs 30, verse 7 to 9, two things I ask of you. Deny them not to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me. Notice what he prayed for. He prayed First of all, oh God, remove falsehood and lying. And secondly, give me neither poverty nor riches. Why? Verse 9 tells us, Lest I be fool and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. So this is not a prayer to say that, Hey, Christians cannot be rich. Christians cannot be prosperous. No, 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 no. Christians, believers can be prosperous. Indeed, in the Bible, we see many heroes of faith. They were very wealthy. And in our daily life, there are many wealthy people who are good Christian, good believers as well. So the Bible is not against that. Moreover, most of us here, although you may not consider yourself rich and prosperous, but when we compare with the villages in Cambodia or some of those third world countries, you realize how well-to-do we are in our daily life. There's so many things that, hey, we take for granted, which in many of these places, they don't even have. They don't even have a running tap. Things like this. And so, most of us here, we ought to recognize that, hey, we are doing well materially, financially. But here is where this prayer comes in. It's a prayer of contentment. That means being contented, learning the secret of contentment. Whether rich or poor, he's okay. He's okay. He said, God, I don't want to be too rich until I forget about God. He knew his heart. 
He knew the danger. And he said, Lord, don't make me be so poor until I got to steal just for a piece of bread. And that will profane the name of God. So he learned the secret of contentment. Whether in abundance or in lack, he wants to trust in the Lord his God and he looked to God as his source of supply. And so the lesson here is this, that at all times, we must trust in him. He is God, our provider, Jehovah Jireh. At the same time, when God allows us to enjoy abundance, when we enter into material prosperity, watch out, be careful. Not that it is wrong, but rather in the midst of the prosperity, remember God. Hallelujah. That is the lesson. Don't forget God in the midst of success and prosperity. And secondly, in the midst of pride and self-reliance, we are very tempted to forget God. Pride and self-reliance. What is pride? At the heart of pride is I, right in the middle. Pride is us thinking too much of ourselves. Pride is us thinking that, hey, I can do it. I'm the one who did it. I've achieved it. Oh, look at all this success. Look at all this. I am the one who made it. That is pride. When there is pride, it is self-reliance, and that's where we forget about God. Instead of giving glory, instead of giving thanks to Him, instead of acknowledging Him, we acknowledge ourselves. A classic example is King Nebuchadnezzar. The book of Daniel records for us in Daniel chapter 4, verses 29 to 30. Here it says, at the end of 12 months. Now, what happened before this was God warned King Nebuchadnezzar through a dream. And not just through a dream, but also through the interpretation of prophet Daniel. So the king had been warned by God and Daniel, after giving the interpretation, counseled him, counseled the king to repent and change. And I'm sure for a while, the king listened. After all, the interpretation was so amazing and he recognized it was God who spoke through Daniel. But here in verse 29, it says, after 12 months, after a year gone by, the king forgot all about it. He was back to his old way. And here he says, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, it's not this great Babylon which I built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty. You see what he was thinking, what he was saying? You are saying that, hey, I'm the one who built it. I'm the one who did it. I'm the one who achieved it. And it is all for my glory, for my majesty. And the next moment, God spoke and brought forth discipline. And you knew the rest of the story, how for seven years he, he lost his sanity and, and lived like an animal. After seven years, then he was restored. Then he proclaimed repentance, humility, and give glory to the God who created heaven and earth. And so, pride and reliance is a great no-no. God opposes the proud and exalts the humble. When we become proud, when we become self-reliant, when we think too much of ourselves, that's when we will forget God. The story was said about this wealthy man. He was so wealthy and so he wanted to live longer. And he really looked after his life. And so every day, he made sure he had sufficient sleep. He had balanced, nutritious diet. He exercised regularly. Now, nothing wrong with this. But this is the saying that this is what he did. And he had the best medical services available to him. He went to the best hospital. He had the best doctors. Twice a year, he would go for medical examination. And he didn't smoke, he didn't drink. Wow, you know, sounds so great, isn't it? And the doctor said, oh, sir, you know, 
I, I can forecast that you will live until 100 years old. Wow, he was so happy. But then, in, the, you know, in his middle age, one day suddenly, he died. He passed away at his funeral. Oh, all the famous doctors you know, came because they have serviced him and they knew him and, and they came and, and so they asked, what happened? How come he died? Oh, he remembered to do all these things. He remembered to look after his life. But when he was crossing the road, he forgot to look left and right. He got knocked down by the car. Oh, so sad. But the point is this. Recognize that we are not that great after all. That we are not that powerful. We don't have everything under our control. There are many things that money can buy, but there are much more than money cannot buy. Life can be so fragile and short. And so anytime when we are tempted to think that, hey, I can do it, I did it. Well, humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. Give Him the glory. Learn to trust in Him. And that's what remembering God means. Pay attention to Him. Look to Him. Trust in Him. Amen? Don't become proud. And thirdly, we're talking about when are the times when we're most tempted to forget God. We talk about success and prosperity. We talk about pride and self-reliance. The third aspect is this. Distractions and neglect. Distraction and neglect. And I'm afraid this may be the one that has killed most of our spirituality a lot of time. You see, we don't forget God suddenly. Most of the time, it's a gradual decline. Gradually, we get caught up, we get distracted, and we neglected our spirituality. We neglected God. And we forget about God. This is what Hebrews chapter 2 warns us about. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. In Hebrews 2, verse 1 to 3, Therefore, we must pay much closer attention. Pay attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. Notice the use of the word drifting. Just like at sea, when the boat is not under proper control, it will drift away following the current of the ocean or the blowing of the wind. And here it says, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard. Thank God that we have heard the Word of God through preaching, through lessons, through our own Bible study. But how are we hearing? Are we paying close attention to the Word of God? If we don't, here it says, we will drift away. We will follow the current of this world. We will just follow worldly thinking, worldly culture, worldly value system, and we'll just drift away. And it's a slow process. Gradually, we drift away from God. We forget about God. Verse 2 says, For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution. Notice, here it tells us that disobedience to God, it tells us forgetting God, drifting away from God, has dire consequences. Therefore, verse 3 says, How shall we escape? if we neglect such a great salvation. If we neglect, again, the issue is a gradual drifting decline through neglect. Have we been so busy with life that we actually push real life away? Jesus promised abundant life, but we are so caught up, so busy with life, with living that we push the abundant life away. So watch it, that we don't neglect God, that we don't neglect our spirituality, that we don't forget about God through destruction and neglect. So what is 
occupying your heart right now? Or maybe I should say, what are you preoccupied with in your heart right now? Whatever it is, it takes up so much of your time, so much of your attention until you have no time for God, until you neglect God. Then it's time to make adjustment, to fine-tune your life, to come back to alignment under the ways of God. The year is almost over. Thank God, a new year is coming. New opportunity. Oh, new hope. But also a new challenge for us to realign back to God, to pay attention to God, to draw near to God, to remember Him in our daily life. So I pray that these three areas, if it applies to us, and certain areas will be even more prevalent in our life, then we change. We come back. We come back to the right way. Amen? And how do we come back? How do we make sure that we remember God? Well, three things that I've shared many times. These are the foundation. It's worth reminding. Right? Why do we need to remind? Because we're prone to forget. So we need reminder. So let us be reminded of these three basic foundational spiritual practices in our life to help us remember the Lord our God. One, daily devotion. Again, reminder is not meant to be naggy, but it's worth mentioning once again that daily devotion provides the foundation provides the oxygen, provides the food to our spiritual life. You cannot survive on Sunday service alone. We need a daily draw near to God. Simply coming to God every day, read the Bible and pray. Read the Bible and pray. And I've shared with many of you, I introduced a Bible app, One Year Bible. It's a very good app to help you if you do not have other devotional plan, I recommend that plan to you. Because what it does is that it has daily scripture reading as well as devotional commentary to help you understand the passage that you read. And if you follow it every day, you know something? After one year, you have read the entire Bible. Isn't it great? Plus, the daily devotional commentary to encourage you to build up your faith. And so, start doing your daily devotion today. Hallelujah! And all the more, especially in the new year. Now, after the service, we can show you what, uh, which app are we talking about and, and perhaps help you download. But the point is this. Don't forget God. Remember Him. How? Start with your daily devotion. And secondly, your weekly worship. Weekly worship. Worship is to be a lifestyle. Worship is daily. But the weekly worship we're talking about Sunday service that we come to. Like what we're doing right now. As what the Bible teaches us, forsake not the assembly of the saints. And so we come together every Sunday to worship Him. And interestingly, in the Holy Communion, which for us, we do it once a month, on the first Sunday of the month. When we are partaking of the Holy Communion, remember what the Lord Jesus said? He said, as you eat this bread, drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. In other words, when we partake in the Holy Communion, there is also one way that helps us to remember the Lord our God. So we come for weekly worship. We come for Holy Communion. We come to draw near to God to remember Him. And thirdly, generous giving. Generous giving. The Bible teaches the principle of generous Generous giving. The Bible teaches the principle of tithing. Tithing is an acknowledgement 
of God. Tithing is an act of faith in obedience to God's commandment. When we tithe, we are acknowledging that God is God. We are acknowledging that He owns everything, that He gave us whatever we have. It came from Him. And so through tithing, as we return that 10%, we acknowledge that He is my God. He gave me all things and I return tithing to Him in acknowledgement, in humble submission. So every time we give, every time we tithe, what are we doing? We are remembering the Lord our God. So how do we remember the Lord our God? Well, these are the three basic foundations. Daily devotion, weekly worship, and generous giving. And then finally, as we talk about not forgetting God, remembering the Lord our God, well, the third area that we want to examine is when are we to remember Him? When are we to remember the Lord our God? Now, obviously, the answer is at all times. Right? We have to remember the Lord our God at all times. But there are three specific scenarios that I want to bring to your attention that the Bible reminds us to all the more must remember Him. What are these three scenarios? Number one, in the days of your youth. Now, most of us here will say, oh, yeah, over, too late already. But actually, we're going to discover that in the days of our youth, we have to remember God. It's not just saying that when you're young, then remember. It's saying from youth onwards, all the way till the time of death, let us remember Him. Hallelujah. But of course, this speaks especially to our young people here. The Bible reminds us, in the days of your youth, remember the Lord your God. Let's look at the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. The first phrase. What does he say? Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth. Before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. What is the second part talking about? It's talking about when the time comes as you get older and older. In fact, it will read on in verse 2 onwards in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. It describes our old age in a very poetic and descriptive way. And it's a reminder that right now, maybe you can boast about our youth and, and, and say, hey, I still got you know, time, I still got energy, I still got plenty of opportunity, or oh, I, I still can do this, I still can do that. But life is so short, life is so fragile. We will all get old. We'll all get weak physically. And therefore, the reminder is this, in the days of your youth, remember God. Remember God, your Creator. Remember God, your Redeemer. Remember the Lord, your God. Don't forget Him. And when we learn to remember Him in the days of our youth, even when we are old, we will not forget Him. And so, young people, in the days of your youth, remember God. In your school days, remember God. In your working days, still remember God. In your singleness or in your marriage, remember God. In your sickness, sorrow, victory, defeat, remember the Lord your God at all times. From the cradle to the grave, let us remember the Lord our God. In the days of our youth. Secondly, in the distant land. Don't forget the Lord your God. And this is found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 50. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 50. You who have escaped the sword, live and do not linger. Remember the Lord in a distant land and think on Jerusalem. Remember the Lord your God in a distant land. Here, prophet Jeremiah was prophesying 
to the exile in Babylon. What happened was the Israelite, they forgot about their God. They turned away from God. They followed after false gods, idols. As a result, they lost the presence and the protection of God. The Babylonians came, defeated them, took many of them into exile. And that's where Daniel, Ezekiel, many of these well-known figures, that's how they ended up in the land of Babylon. And here prophet Jeremiah prophesied to them, reminding them, telling them, in the distant land, what do you do? Don't forget the Lord your God. In a distant land, away from Jerusalem, away from home, remember the Lord your God. How does this apply to us? We may not have been destroyed as a nation, we may not have been taken to exile, but in our daily life, there may be seasons of life when we go into a distant land, whether geographically or emotionally. Geographically can be you actually leave home, you know, go stay outside or go overseas. Emotionally can be the time of transition when you leave school, you go into the workplace, oh, I'm adult right now, I'm free, I'm independent. Or when maybe you get married, you stay outside, things like this. But the point is that when you are away, away from your Christian background, from your Christian root, remember God. Oh, it's so easy to be affected by the changes and, and the newfound freedom and, and all of a sudden then we forget about God. So here is a reminder. When you are in the distant land, when you are in a different environment, when you are into a new, new, new season of your life, don't forget God. You know, the church family, when we know each other, we encourage one another. There is a mutual encouragement and accountability. You know, sadly, sometimes, even, I mean, we've seen that like, even if people go to other church and we bless them, but there is a danger in that when we're in a new environment, when we're not well connected with the people there, and if we don't, you know, make a point to connect, what happens is that because you're away from the familiar fellowship, brothers and sisters, then there is no accountability, there is no reminder, no encouragement. And then the temptation, the distraction can be even greater. So the point is this, whatever scenario, go into a distant land, change of work, change of residence, change of church home and so forth. In all these situations, be reminded to stay focused on God, to pay attention to the Lord our God. Don't ever forget Him. So in the days of your youth, in a distant land, and thirdly, in the belly of trouble. Why do I use the word belly? Can you guess what Bible story are we talking about? Jonah, that's right. In chapter 2, verse 7. In Jonah chapter 2, verse 7. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. The story of Jonah. He was disobedient to God. God said, go east, he went west. God said, go north, he went south. He was running away from the call and the will of God. And what happened? He was swallowed up by a big fish. So he was in the belly of this big fish and he cried out to God. And here he says, when my life was fainting away. You will die in the belly of the big fish, you know. You will get digested, you know, sooner or later. His life was fainting away. He cried out to God. He said, Lord, I remember you. Save me. 
And although he was in the belly of the big wheel, but his prayer still can reach the presence of God. And God delivered him and he went to Nineveh to preach the proclamation that God has sent him to proclaim. But here, in the belly of trouble, when we face situations, challenges, difficulties, and I'm sure 2020, there were plenty of them. Looking ahead, you may feel like, wow, still quite dark, quite hopeless, maybe even more challenges. But nevertheless, out of the valley of trouble, we can call on Him. So all the more, remember God. Amen? Remember Him. And guess what? Your prayer reaches Him. And He answers your cry. Hallelujah. With His grace. More than sufficient grace. He answers your prayer with His divine wisdom to guide you, to know what to do, how to walk. He answers you with His tender, loving care so that when you can't do it, when you have no more strength, He will minister to to you. He will restore your strength so that you can be refreshed, ready to face the new year with new anointing, new strength, new opportunity. Great hope from the Lord your God. So in the belly of trouble, remember the Lord your God. There was this soldier who was captured by the enemy in the war. And he was kept in the prisoner of war concentration camp for a few years until finally the war was over and he was released when he went home. Of course, all the media attention, he was interviewed. The journalist asked him, how did you survive those years? Those years of inhumane torture, unspeakable atrocity that was being done on them. And this is what he said. He said, they took away my food. They took away my freedom. They tortured me. They interrogated me. But there's one thing they cannot take away. They cannot stop me from remembering the Lord my God. Remembering God kept me sane. Under such condition, many would have gone insane. But he said, it's because of God. Remembering God kept me sane. Situation in life, it may feel like it's, I'm going insane, I'm going crazy. But remembering God will keep you in a sound mind. Hallelujah. Will keep you sane, will keep you safe, will keep you strong. Hallelujah. Remembering God will bring you out of the belly of trouble into the will of God. Hallelujah. And so, this is our challenge today. From youth all the way to old age, from the cradle to the grave, whether in sickness or in health, in adversity or prosperity, in when we are at home or when we are in a distant land at all times, what do we do? Don't you ever forget the Lord your God. But let us remember the Lord our God. And indeed, we will go through victoriously and triumphantly. So, summarize that one statement, remember? Don't forget God and perish. Let's remember Him and prosper. Hallelujah! This is our challenge and this is our promise for the brand new year. Amen? Shall we stand? Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Shakarandorobokshandai. Hallelujah. Shakarandorobokshandai. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I trust that 
your response to God's reminder will be to say, Yes, O God, I remember you at all times. In my youth, in my old age, I will not forget you. Help me, O God, and He will. By His grace, He gives us the strength to carry on. To carry on! Hallelujah! And so, I want to invite us at this time to commit our heart to Him once again. Amen? In the past 12 months, there may have been many things that have stolen your heart, may have stolen your attention, that may have distracted you. But now is the time to take back and say, Lord, my heart belongs to you and you alone. I return it to you. I return my attention back to you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Shakaran dorobo shiriyan daraba shandai. Hallelujah. Shiriyan dorobo shandai. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time. Lord, that we can be reminded all through the preaching of your word. Lord, that we are not to forget you, but to remember you in our daily life, every moment of the way. Lord, indeed, we want to draw close to you. We want to walk closely with you. Lord Jesus, extend your grace upon us, O God. Give us the strength. Give us the grace to follow you, to carry on. And indeed, right now, Spirit of the living God, touch every heart, O God. Open every heart, O God, towards you. Lord, as we cry out to you, Lord, I need you. Lord, I want you. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, that I may remember and not forget you. So, Lord Jesus, I commit all of us unto you right now. Individually, as a church, O oh God, we acknowledge that it is you, it is you who have seen us through. It is you who has been with us. And it is you who will see us through the new year as well. So we look to you and we acknowledge you and we give you the praise and the glory. And Lord, we speak blessing over your people. We speak new hope, hallelujah, new opportunity, hallelujah, greater blessing, greater prosperity over your people. Let 2021 be a year of great favor, blessing and prosperity, hallelujah, that your people will walk in your divine destiny, O oh God. Lord, that your people will enjoy, O oh God, Lord, your prosperous plan for their life, O oh God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, that will enjoy, O oh God, your great grace, hallelujah. Your great grace come upon us. Oh Jesus, you're such a good God. And so we look forward to walking with you in the brand new year. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We commit ourselves into your mighty hand right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Let's remember him. Shall we? Praise God. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As we close the service, why don't you say to one another, don't forget God. Amen. Don't forget God. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. We close our service here. Amen. Those who need prayer, you may come forward. God bless you. Amen.